Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where the Commander Clash crew, Richard, Seth, Krim, and I, hello, we discuss Commander-related topics, and today we are going to be talking about mana rocks in Commander, specifically three mana value or three converted mana costs, however you want to say it, mana rocks. So the, the common knowledge these days uh, for the meta in terms of commander is that you usually want your mana rocks, your ramp, to be in the range of zero to two mana. I think that's kind of like the norm uh, that people are going for these days. And if you have more, if you have a mana rock that costs more than that, it has to do something extra for it to be worthwhile, uh, have have a, a slot here. And I think that's kind of like what Wizards of the Coast has also been acknowledging and pushing for more recently. We've been getting three mana rocks that do something extra. So now we're going to go through all the best three mana rocks, and we're going to decide together uh, whether or not it's worth running in our deck. So we selected uh, the most popular three mana rocks, um, currently played in Commander, and we're going to put it in a tier list. So we have rankings uh, for each of them that we're all going to go through together. Uh, at D, D means we don't play it, <laughs> just straight up not good. It's also, I guess, an F. Uh, C is average, where you're happy, with you're, you're not happy casting it, but like, you know, sometimes you just need to fill a slot with a, with a, with a mana rock, and there it is, it does the job, you know? B is, it's very good in certain decks, but not most decks. It's very, like, niche, and uh, you'd run it in some decks, but not not necessarily in a bunch of decks. Then we got A, where A is the, the mana rock is really good overall. You're going to be running it in most decks, and it's going to be exceptional in some decks. Uh, so these are, like, some of the very best uh, mana rocks you can choose from at the three mana. And then finally, we got the coveted S rank. S is basically this mana rock is so good that you're going to be pretty much running it in every single deck, or at least non-green decks, um, that you could possibly put it in, and it's going to be one of the best cards in very particular decks. Um, so this is like the creme de la creme, and uh, we won't hand out a lot of S's. It's probably going to be like one or two S's from each person. And that's basically our ranking scale. So I, I think we just get started. Uh, we're going to start with the first mana rock on our list. And this is a spicy one. This is Midnight Clock. So Midnight Clock is... I have to pull up the list. There we a go. Clock. Editing. A mana rock. Editing. It's a mana rock. It's a mana rock. <laughs> three CMC. It's, it's a three, three CMC. So three mana value. Three uh, mana value, it... three CMC. Which one's going to get us canceled? I don't know which one I should say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's two and a blue. Uh, it's a mana rock. It taps to add uh, blue. And you can pay three mana to put an hour counter on midnight clock. At the beginning of each upkeep, put an hour counter on midnight clock. And then when the 12th hour counter is put on midnight clock, shuffle your hand and graveyard into your library, then draw seven cards, exiled midnight clock. So this is very much like the, what's it called? Like Cinderella type clock where, you know, every single every single hour you put, every single turn, each person's turn, you put a, a, a an hour counter on it. Then when the 12th hour happens, boom, you exile it and you get a fresh hand or you, you, you know, you shuffle away your graveyard or library, put it and draw, draw seven. Um, so it's, it, it's big, it's flashy. Uh, what do we all think about it? Starting with Richard. Uh, I went with A. It's close to an S to me. Uh, it's card draw. So this thing goes really fast, right? You put a counter on everyone's upkeep, so it spins around really fast. The only downside is sometimes your hand is full when it goes off, hence it does nothing, right? So it doesn't go into every single deck. Like if you're planning on drawing a lot of cards or you're planning on like holding cards, uh, like, you know, you have a lot of counter spells. You're not going to unload your counter spells and hope Midnight Clock pops off, right? You're going to have to hold yeah. your counter spells. And then, hence, it's not going to do exactly. But it is extremely good. Uh, it is one of the few three CMC mana rocks I would actually play. Uh, but, you know, you need to think about it. And I think there are other rocks in this list that deserve S over it. You can't give S to everyone. So I, I think it's A close to S. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, Seth, what do you think about this one? 
I also have it as an A, I'm probably also a high A, although my concern with it is a little different than Richard's. It is true uh, that sometimes you don't want to shuffle your hand back in. I actually just played M Midnight Clock on our last Commander Clash, and I had like five cards in hand, and it was a little awkward. It worked out in the end, but it was a little <laughs> awkward. <laughs> I know, I know. I did end up winning, and it did end up drawing me the cards I wanted, but it was still like... <laughs> risky to shuffle in a full hand my concern is i don't like it as much in like five and four color decks because it only makes blue mana so i think for me the reason it's not a s tier play in every single deck is it only makes blue mana and if i'm playing a five color deck then i really value mana rocks that offer more fixing but in a mono color deck a two color deck a three color deck i'm probably going to play midnight clock every single time hmm yeah, okay. I, I, I agree with all those those points. Uh, Krim, what do you think about this card? I think it's an S. Now, okay, I'm shocked, so... I'm actually. <laughs> he, he, I also last second changed this to an S because as I thought about it, I do play this in pretty much every blue deck I have. And whether or not, like, I, I, I think the fact that I get to just draw seven new cards while adding mana, and it... it just, on its own is always good. It's always good. And usually it's like this awkward spot where people are like, well, do I answer this or not? Because it feels bad having like, you know, to blow up this midnight clock that's going to blow itself up anyways. Uh, so I I am a huge fan of this just because of the wheel clause. The, the wheel clause is great unless, you know, you get like, like notion thief or something. But other <laughs> than that, I, I, I think this is good enough to play in every blue deck. And, and maybe that's, that's the only thing, uh, because like Seth had mentioned, this one is either, uh, like a low S or a high A leaning towards an S. And I think I just went with a low S because I do play it quite often in every blue deck. So this is obviously like relative to me. Um, and I only like mostly play blue decks and I, I think that's just good enough. Well, it, that's fitting. Yeah. And, and then on top of that, I think people will often just concede to a blue deck drawing a whole new hand. <laughs> uh, so, like, there's the uh, psychological damage that this also does, too. So, uh, and, and, and I love that. So, I'm all for it. If, if, so, if I go from three cards to seven cards and leave up two mana, people are going to have to hold, play a whole new game of mental gymnastics. So, one would say it is a win con, right? This is the win condition people say you have to include in your decks, right? Because it is a clock. So, uh, <laughs> and you get to make that joke that's every good, time, every time free. That's free for everybody watching and listening. You don't even have to pay for that. That's just free value for you. I'm a little bit surprised though, Krim, because when Seth was talking about like, if you're a control deck, you know, you don't necessarily want to discard, I mean, put away well, your hand. You're not hand discarding. And, you're not discarding. You're not discarding. You're, you're just shuffling it away and getting a new seven. I always figured that, like, for your decks, when you go control, you don't generally spend... You don't usually go, like, you just, like, dump your hand of answers. You usually try to be very conservative with it. Do, yeah. you, like, do you, like, change that mentality when you have Midnight Clock? You're just, like, nope. just blowing all your answers as quickly yeah. as possible? I mean, you're, hmm. you're... Like, the table is naturally going to do that anyways if you're the control deck, right? They're going to naturally force you to use all your answers, and so with that, I assume by the time the clock hits 12, I will automatically get to draw, like, r refill my hand. And if not, that means I've already slowed the whole table down by, like, a few turns, making them play around it. So, uh, like, if they're like, oh, well, wait until he cycles through his deck and then start casting your spells. And it's like, cool. I probably had nothing anyways. And I just <laughs> sat there with a grin and a bunch of lands. So, yeah. Or not enough lands. So, uh, like, like that's why I, I think I'm okay with it. And, like, with deck building, there's redundancy in the way I build my decks. So there's not just, like, one counter spell in my deck. There's usually, like, 32. So the, the thing here is I, I will usually draw a new hand and get the same uh, the same type of spell. That's fair. Um, well, I, I, I kind of agree with the rest of the table on this one where, like, I, this card... I've I put Midnight Clock in almost all my blue decks, and I've almost never been disappointed when it wheels. Like it just gets so much value. So generally speaking, I'm going to run it into every blue deck. Maybe like Seth said, like five color deck or four color decks. It doesn't mana fix, which is a big 
issue if you have a three mana ronk. Um, and I'm probably not going to run it in a four or five color deck. But basically everything else, I'm going to run it in, even in control deck. Like like Krim said, like for me, uh, I will probably be a little bit more reckless with my removal once I once I feel pretty confident that the mana that the the clock is going to uh, pop off. And I think I think like uh, if if somebody is like actually thinking about <clears throat> destroying your three mana rock, if it's that big of a threat, that kind of speaks to how strong this card is, really. Like if people are willing to spend removal on your mana rock, uh, I think yeah. that's that that says a lot about it. The only big drawback I would say about this card, um, other other than four and five color, is it does shuffle your graveyard into your library, and sometimes this is actually a good thing. Like if you have like powerful removal spells that you want to redraw, that's great. But if you're a graveyard deck, you don't necessarily want your graveyard to be shuffled uh, without your without you like uh, wanting that effect to happen, right? Like I had an Arumi deck and I had Midnight Clock in it. Uh, Arumi is like this encore commander, really wants to have your your deck full of stuff creatures in your graveyard. I had Midnight Clock there because I just you know it's a two color blue deck. Obviously, I'm going to put Midnight Clock there. And then uh, the clock struck twelve, and I lost my beautiful graveyard. <laughs> and I realized too too late uh, what I have done. Um, so in graveyard decks, it's not that it, it does kind of hurt a little bit. It, it, it resets your setup. Um, but otherwise, I, I think this is one of the best mana rocks, honestly. I, I yeah. will say it got better with the Hull Breacher banning, but oh, yeah. I still think it's incredibly risky to telegraph your draw seven in a world where, you know, we have notion thieves, people can nars at you. And it's not just like they stuff this, right? You discard your hand, like you nars at wield yourself if you don't have an answer to that nars at before this goes off, because it's not a may, it's a must. So. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a dicey proposition playing this with Krim at the table, right? Yeah, so <laughs> If he's on the mirror, then I will think yeah. twice about casting it, honestly. Wait, why would you think uh, why would you think twice about casting think twice? <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously Notion Thief would take both of the the cards, right? Okay, fair. Fair. <laughs> now, unless you play the new think twice of 2021 Siphon Insight. That card. That card I would go on a tangent there. I've I've gotten so m- I've gotten got by that card so many times. I don't want to talk about it. Oh, I don't want to talk about it. That's a oh, different Tomer. topic. Different miss, topic. <laughs> this is this is where I miss paper commander. God, I want to see somebody's face when I siphon it. I love it when they, forget, <laughs> when they get my my premier removal spell to two for one me and then my Ren and seven. That feels great. Anyway, we're not talking about that though. We're talking about <laughs> mana rocks. So we're gonna move on to the next one. Uh, and what do we got uh, next, Richard? Uh, we got Skyclave, a relic. Uh, three mana value, kicker three, indestructible. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, create two tap tokens that are copies. Tap, add one mana of any color. What do you think about this one? This is the best mana rock, right? Um, this is like the only mana rock I will play at like three mana value. So the reason I don't like three mana value is by turn five or six, expect all your artifacts to get destroyed, right? Like by then someone's going to cleansing Nova, a steer command, like something's going to happen. So most of these mana rocks, they have to have a really good purpose besides adding mana. But this one is indestructible. It adds mana of any color and it scales late game. Late game, you have nothing. You kick this, you just add more mana, and then hopefully you untap and draw something mm-hmm. more legit, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. That costs like, you know, nine mana or something, you win the game, right? So I actually have this as S tier. Uh, it goes in literally every like non-green deck, and you would even consider putting this in green decks, right? Like because the indestructible clause is that strong. Um, but yeah, I think Krim first mentioned this card and then I was sold on it, right? Like this this just goes in every deck where you need to kind of fill out your curve and add some color fixing or something like that. Yeah, this this card's great. I have this as S tier two. I mean it's essentially Dark Steel Ingot and almost Gilded Lotus split card, if you really think of it that way. You have this three mana mana rock that can also be a more expensive mana rock that adds multiple mana, adds three mana, it fixes your colors, it's indestructible. I, I'm actually shocked that this card doesn't see more play. If you look at EDH rec and just like scroll through the list of mana rocks, you see like lockets and some really well, I would consider that, low, that has to be a budget. 
Like, yeah. well, I mean, Skyclave Relic's cheap, isn't it? Isn't Skyclave Relic Actually, also pretty two inexpensive? Bucks. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, it's two bucks. Oh, two yeah, bucks. it's not that bad. Wow, yeah. it's only two dollars. I thought so, this was way higher than that. Yeah. So, and Dark Stealing gets ahead of it, and like a lot of mana rocks that seem way, way worse than this see more play than this. So, yeah, I, I totally agree. This is my one of my favorite three mana mana rocks. Well, okay, so if if it's that low on the list, then it's not only an amazing <laughs> mana rock, it is an underrated mana rock and should be... Pl- like, yeah, I've been playing this in, like, about every deck I can play. Like, Richard, the for the main reason that Richard had just mentioned, right, you know, like, in about around turn four or five, everything's getting blown up. All your all your stuff. And the fact that this scales into the late game where I... Like, sure, anytime you top deck a mana rock, it's always going to feel bad when you need something, right? But But the thing, outside of that clause... This is great at all phases of the game. Um, so, like, if I draw this early, whatever. It's my multicolored mana rock. If I draw it late, it's going to be three or two whatever multicolored mana rocks. And, yeah, I've been in love with this since it came out in Zendikar Rising. Um, I, I just... Because, like, I are like they would have to exile. And I feel like for them to exile, that's like a merciless eviction. And I don't know how many people are trying to go hard exile on your stuff. So I, I love this card. I, I, this thing is an amazing mana rock. S tier all the way through. And and this one I, I feel like is a high S, not like a low S. This is like legit the best mana rock. Solid S. At three. Yeah, I, I'm actually trying to think about the last time I came across a mass exile spell. Like there was a time when I started playing uh, Commander, the Merciless Eviction world was pretty fire, common. <laughs> world, well, I mean, yeah. We, if you got World Fire, you got World Fire, you know? Maybe they should ban it. Too strong. I think you have bigger issues. It's too than strong. Than losing your yeah. Skyclave Relics is, if there's a is, World Fire. This is why World Fire should have stayed banned. It, it, it gets rid of Skyclave Relic. But no. Uh, so, so I actually, I think I don't run it in green decks. Um, so four, four colored, well, mm. five colored decks I don't run it in. And... Uh, Green Wait. decks I don't run it in, but when you when you guys were talking about it, like I had it at A initially, but when I'm thinking about it, yeah, the all the mana rocks are gonna get destroyed at some point, right? All of them will get destroyed. That's why green land ramp is so good, is because people don't really want to mess with lands. There's a stigma against it. I know Krim, you know a little bit about that, right? <laughs> um, but but the point the fact of the matter is if uh, your average oh, play group people are not going to be messing with lanes like there's a there's a taboo against it uh, but mana rocks get blown up all the time like Vandal Blast is basically in every single red deck uh, oh, any white deck is going to get like an austere commander an onto inversion or like an hour of revelation or something to wipe all your mana rocks at some point Skyclay Relic's indestructibility is actually super legit and like Darkseal Ingot I don't really run that much because, you know, it has a scaling issue. But Skyclave Relic, yeah, turn three, you, you put put down a Relic, that feels really, that feels pretty solid. Like, you know that when there is going to be artifact removal, that one's going to be sticking around. And then if you get a late game, yeah, you get, you get three Dark Seal Relics. And like, sure, if they can exile one of it, fine. But you still have two others and they're tokens. So if you, they like synergize with like token yeah. decks and anointed procession. Um, and it just is really good. Yeah, it's, it's definitely an S. It's definitely an S. It's one of the most interesting uh, mana rocks they've made, and one of my favorites for sure. It's it's such a high S. It's not a normal S. It's the <laughs> S that everybody drew on their desk as a, a fifth grader. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I won't put it in a green deck though, still, because until until if you know, people, you know, everyone listening. <laughs> until people like blow up lanes regularly, I'm not going to run in this over like a nature's lore or something because it's just like. Tomer. You get the same benefit. It, it doesn't two. get opposition agented. That's true. Okay. If I'm, si- if I'm sitting against <laughs> you three can black play players, into the opposition uh, agent with this. Good, good. If, if I'm in like some sort of hell where every single game has to be against Krim, and he, he always hell. play. No, well, I would you know, never. like Krim, Krim's, Krim's playing Grixis Control, and that's the only matchup I'm up against every single time, and I'm the last person before Krim goes. You know, <laughs> you know, like you're in that spot at the table, and he's on grace of control for every single game forward. I'm going to, I'm going to run Skyclave Relic. Like, I will, I will concede that shuffling is indeed bad. <laughs> I, I'm not saying hell is a bad place. Sounds toxic. Sounds I'm, I'm terrible. saying like a quest for the Jank Lord Hell. I mean, in a good way, Krim. Trust me. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, Seth, what's next on our list? <laughs> uh, next on our list, we have Commander's Sphere, a three-mana mana rock that taps to add a mana of any color, and you can sacrifice it to draw a card. It's kind of like a three-mana Mind Stone, sort of. And I have this as an A-tier. Uh, I put a lot of value in mana rocks that can turn into cards. I know, like, out of our play group, I'm probably highest on stuff like Hedron Archive. Uh, that's, like, a card that I think is really good when some other people don't like as much and they're wrong. But th that's that's neither here nor there. But I put a lot of value in that because the downside of mana rocks is in the late game, once you have a lot of mana, they don't do much. Like, they're bad. They're actively bad when you have 10 mana on the battlefield. You don't need that extra mana. It's a dead card off the top, just like drawing an extra land when you really need action. Worst case, this cycles for three mana. So it has a lot more late game value than other three mana mana rocks. So it's one of my favorites. It's definitely not S tier. I don't play in every deck, but it is one that I turn to often if I'm looking for a three mana rock. That's fair. Richard, you're not so high on this. No, I have it. <laughs> I like See? so here here's my experience, right? So yeah, you can cycle it, right? And you can cycle it at basically instant speed, right? Like the problem with Mindstone is like if you tap it for mana and then they wrath the the board, you're like out of luck. But this one you can cycle. So that that has that going for it, but I feel you never sack your mana rocks like ever, really, right? Like only truly desperate times. Like most of the time, even if you're sitting on eight <laughs> mana. You don't sack that Hedron Archive or you don't sack that Commander Sphere because you need that mana to play your commander, right? So I, I find that it's overrated, especially for like just like three mana, mana rock. Like what's the point? Like you might as well have drawn action and did something. So while it's okay, like you can play it. If you don't have anything better to do, like sure. Like I, I would be actively looking to cut this card from my deck, <laughs> trying to put something better. Because, like, just play your commander if you have nothing to do. Rather than, like, sack the sphere to draw action, just play your commander, but, <laughs> right? But what if you don't believe in playing your commander, Richard? <laughs> How much it's does a it commander go up in value? Ask, asking for a friend. Asking for a friend. Just... <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Oh, man. I, I, I agree with Richard. I, oh. To be honest with you, I feel like this. I have this at C, and I would probably rate it maybe even lower than that, closer to, like, a D plus. I hmm. think cool. almost anything is better here than, than playing Commander Sphere. If you're if the only reason you're playing it is because of budget and availability, that, that's fine. That makes sense. Uh, but otherwise, I wouldn't even play the Mana Rock. I would just play another land. <laughs> I, would, I would play a, a, rem a removal spell. Hmm? How about that? <laughs> and or like Hagra Mauling, MDFC. MDFC, they're, they're, it's a spell and a land. Yeah, look, you, get, you get a two for, wow, it does it all. It increases your credit score. It does it all, really. <laughs> MDFCs are great. I, I, but this has your mana the turn you cast it. Mm. <laughs> uh, you don't need that, mm. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, like I, I think this, this is just better off served as another card, unless this is just something that you play because you, it's what you have available, uh, availability. An availability thing. All right. Well, I guess I guess some of my rating is actually a little bit influenced by the price. This is one of my favorite budget mana rocks. So I think like if I was ignoring the price, I would say it's a B. I really like this because we just talked about in with Skyclave Relic the uh, the power of being um, uh, not vulnerable to board wipes. We we talked about how like how often in our in our play groups at least i don't know about for people who are listening right now uh how often mass artifact hate happens in your play group it could be a lot less than ours but i know like when i'm casting mana rocks in commander clash or on stream i know eventually they're going to get destroyed in a couple turns that's just how it's going to be so the the thing i really like about commander sphere is that you can cash it in to draw a card when that uh that wipe happens and very important you don't have to tap it to sacrifice and draw a card. You can just do it at any given time. And that's a big thing that I've had issue with, like, let's say, lockets or, or stuff like that, where you need to tap it and activate its ability. I'm pretty sure that's how it works with them. Um, this one does not have that issue. You never need mana up to cash it in. Um, and that's huge. So you can be fully tapped out. Somebody Vandal Blasts, and you still get to draw a card. You still get some of that value back uh, before you lose it. Um, so in the fact that it's like 25 cents, 
uh, is really good. So it's one of my go-to uh, budget inclusions for, for a budget mana base. If I'm not in green, this is going into most of them. So I would say it's a B if you're not a, if price is not a concern, but because I love it so much in budget brews, I'm going to put it as an A. All right, moving on. We got... Uh... Seth didn't say anything yet. Wait, no, Seth said anything. Krim didn't say I anything yet. Krim. I started that one. Yeah, it's Krim. It's Krim's okay. turn to shine. Let me <laughs> go ahead and just say this is very close also uh, to, to an S. It is Chromatic Lantern. Now, I let, let me explain why I love Chromatic Lantern. But you put it as a... What, an actually... A? An A, right? It should be an A, because that's what it is. Uh, but Oh, sorry. But yes, <laughs> I put it an A because... Oddly enough, even though it's vulnerable, it is still a way to color fix. And as someone who loves to cast cruel ultimatums and triple black spells, you need something to help with that. And and the color fixing is very important. Also, in case there's any uh, bearded uh, gentlemen that love playing Blood Moon, uh, you you got to make sure you got that Grixis mana base. <laughs> uh, like you know what I mean? Like you got to be ready for that. So um, I I. I I think color fixing is very important in in Commander and in a three color deck. This is pretty much uh, this is why it's at an A because this is really only good in a three color deck and above. It's kind of meh in a two, uh, and you're just trolling if you play it in a mono color deck. So the thing the thing here is I I love this card. So for that and that reason alone. Other than that, it that's why it sits at an A. It's not an an S quite. Uh, but it is good for a deck that cares about color fixing. Like if you're going counterspell, which is blue, blue, or and then you also want to cast, let's just say, I don't know, uh, uh, mal- whatever the the double black kill spell. And there, there's so many like mo- like cards that require like blue, blue, black, black, red, red, um, potentially triple black, like Nico Bolas Dragon God. So <laughs> from my play experience, I still think this card holds up to this day if you're in a three color or more deck. Hmm. Hmm. Or uh, not? Are we going in I, order, or are we just speaking up? <laughs> I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna agree with that. I don't oh, know. I'm okay. also. I've also put it as an A. You know why? Because I'm super lazy when it comes to tapping, and I just don't want to think about <laughs> what mana I need to sequence properly. You know? <laughs> oh, what about for wee! what about for the lazy <laughs> people out here? <laughs> literally. Literally, I have it. I have it in my Zedru the Great Hearted deck because I'm dumb and I don't want to think about. I don't want to think about. Okay, well, I need. I need. I need uh, red, white, blue to activate Zedru at some given point. I have this triple red spell. I have this other multicolor spell. I have blah 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 blah. I don't even know what I'm going to be casting next because I can't think that far far forward. It's it's the it's the ultimate cheat sheet where it's like it doesn't matter what you, you tap for it's all great yeah yeah sure it I, also beats blood moon which is great too it also is really good with like utility lands like if you have colorless lands that uh, aren't mana fixing now they're suddenly a lot better they don't hurt as much reliquary towers and reliquary towers like and also like if you're running stuff that like is like powerful utility lands that don't tap for mana by themselves like let's say you have a cabal coffers and you want to drop it on like turn four or something when it's not good yet you know now your cabal coffers. You know, some people, some people at this table have had the pain of a cabal coffers. You know, just not doing anything the entire game, and they groan and it sucks. But you know what? This can just let it tap for mana right off the bat, right off the bat. As soon as you ca- as soon as you put it on the battlefield, boom. Um, that's that's or, true. Yep, and it's like Maze of Ith too is also really powerful, but it doesn't tap for mana. Um, and this will let you do that too. But my thing is, I like being lazy. I don't like thinking about how to play magic. I just want to play magic. All right. <laughs> I agree with Tomer. Let's call it a face roll card. I like calling it's a face, face like roll card. where I can just put my face, roll it across the keyboard, and I'll be fine because it doesn't matter. It adds whatever color I need. In League of Legends, this would be called spin to win. All right. This is a spin to win mana rock. All right. <laughs> uh, uh. A solid A. <laughs> 
It's <laughs> overrated. <laughs> it's disagree. overrated. It's overrated. I think Hermetic Lantern is the most overrated mana rock on our entire Ooh. list. It just has mana. It's a dark steel ingot ninety percent of the time. It is incredibly oh, rare. So much more it is than incredibly that. rare in your three color deck. If you build a halfway reasonable mana base, that you're gonna get color screwed. Like it is. It is not something that happens very often. Uh, I play it in five color decks, but if I'm playing a three mana mana rock. I want more value than just fixing my mana. Just fixing my mana is not good enough. I think it's unnecessary at anything outside of five colors. Also, it is miserable on Magic Online. Similar <laughs> to playing with an Urborg or something, I wanted to put it at D tier just because just because of that. I intentionally leave it out of decks that I want to play it in sometimes because it's the opposite of what Tomer was saying. Sure, in paper, maybe it makes your life super easy and lazy and you can just do whatever you want. On Magic Online, it makes your life incredibly hard because you got to have five colors for every land and choose the right color. There's no auto tap or anything like Magic Arena. So, yeah, I, I'm not a fan. I'll play it in five color decks, but that's about it. What about as, spin to win? That's so weird because as someone, uh, I'm somewhat of a, a professional at losing to the Moto interface. <laughs> um, I, I would say I, I feel like it's not that bad. I think it's totally fine. <laughs> on, on top of that, <laughs> this, the, I can tell somebody here ha plays more green than Grixis. They don't understand the struggles of trying to cast a triple <laughs> yeah, black spell really. here. <laughs> <laughs> Like in Grixis, you have Orborg, right? Triple black is not a problem for you. Like yeah, triple red about, might be a problem. What about counter spell? And <laughs> like sometimes you want to cackle with power. And, and on top of that, Casper <laughs> Ultimate. I agree when are we with that. This card is super overrated. Oh! Like, no, man. you can't what? pin yeah. the hopes of your jank mana base on a lantern that gets blown up on turn five, right? <laughs> like if you needed this to cast your spells, then your game is over when someone rats the board, right? So you need to build a halfway reasonable mana base to begin with. And we have the world tree. If you really want to be brain dead, right? We have the that's world only tree. That's five colors. Right? That's we true. also have... But that's but the only... three color brain deads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have filter lands. You have, like, two mana value mana rocks that add any color. Like, you just don't need this card. Like, it doesn't do anything. And... But what if you you don't have the right mana to use the filter land, or you don't want to, you know, like like that? Now you can. Like, but I feel the incremental advantage of this card is not enough, right? Because like, imagine all the other games where you didn't draw a commanding lantern. Your mana base needs to be somewhat reasonable <laughs> still, right? So this is just you adding like an additional one percent or something. Oh, oh, it's you vamp it's still oh, nice cool. to have. Okay, oh. I don't know if I vamp tutor. I don't know if I. Well, I don't tutor anyways. But the thing Look. here is. I, I think this is still a good card regard like obviously you want to build a solid mana base on its own, right? But but the thing here is it doesn't hurt to have training wheels. You know? Exactly. <laughs> it doesn't hurt exactly. that. Look, it's cool. It's cool, dude. The trading wheel costs a deck slot, right? You could you could make that training wheel with look, your look, lands. Look, look, look. Well, who would you play instead? Like like example, I would still choose this over like a commander sphere, a dark steel ingot, and all I, of that. I think right? a dark steel ingot. No, if you really oh. were scared for your colors, you would take a dark steel ingot, right? Because it's indestructible and it fixes your colors. Okay. I think of it this way, though. Let's say you're on an electronic bicycle. And, you know, it has a manual <laughs> mode, right? It has a manual mode. So most of the time, you, you need to conserve the power on it because it has usually a small battery. But sometimes you're you're going uphill, you know? You're going uphill. And you need that. You you, you, yeah. you can like that little boost, you know? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you're It's you're like the NOS. It's like charm. NOS for Fast and Furious. And, like, yeah. like obviously yeah, NOS yeah, yeah. existed before Fast and Furious. But the thing here is, <laughs> like, you dude, don't need dude, it. Come on. But it's really yeah. nice. Uh, Lantern know? is you a should've... $10 card. It costs oh, you a that deck is slot. Very expensive. Right? The reason you don't use the NOS is the NOS costs you, like, a grand. And you're like, do I need that quarter second? Right? You're like, nah. I'll just get there by Prius. Right? Some of the need triple blue and Grixis. All right? I should have good mana fixing but sometimes you want to you just want to yeah. turn your brain off you know you this is the off. most expensive rock <laughs> on our list right like i would invest yeah. that into a fetch land or something right or a oh. shock land or something to build out that mana base <laughs> and, and yeah. just you know it's not that much. Base. It's really not that much different than Dark Steel and Get a lot of the time. It really it gets isn't. Much better. Oh, it gets no, survives. It's better. <laughs> the training wheels. This is our Civil War. Like this is <laughs> it's... the underrated versus overrated crowd. I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. it, they are training wheels. But what if you saw an adult going down the street <laughs> and every day they commute past you with training wheels? You're like, <laughs> get it, dude. What's every really, six I mean, months, like, do we still need frills? the training wheels? I get the pink frills on the side as well. I just go full out. 
I go this, full this out. Is, this is like training wheels with rims on them, though. Right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> See, like, listeners, it, it's listeners, pretty nice, dude. <laughs> tweet us. Tweet us what you think about, about this or leave a comment. Um, because this is this is gonna be this is a thing. I did not know we would be yeah, so like, divided. Yeah, this might be <laughs> the most controversial one on the whole list, actually. Yeah. yeah. I okay. If it uh, weren't for price, I think I think you'd all love it, right? Like, no, 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 no I, I don't care about ten bucks. I think it's still bad. I would still. Like, <laughs> I well, we've just ranked all these. Skyclave Relic better than this. Commander's Sphere better than this. Dark oh Steel no, Ingot. Commander's Sphere is not better than this. Oh, Skyclave I mean, I Relic is. I, I agree. But... Skyclave Relic is. And how many three mana rocks can you play? That's the other thing. Is you're talking about Grixis and stuff like. How many three mana mana rocks are you gonna put in your deck? You already want your midnight clock. You already want your skyclave relic. Are you really just Number playing three, three mana rock well, tribal? We're gonna like... have to. We have to find out by finishing the rest of the thing. Maybe <sighs> we'll come back. We'll circle back to <laughs> the chromatic letter. If, we, if we're a Grixis deck, how many of these will be run? What's the order? <laughs> All right, moving on. Moving on because we got a lot left. Uh, this is this is this is my one of my favorite mana rocks that I feel is grossly underrated. This is Inspiring Statuary. Now, Inspiring Statuary doesn't even look like a mana rock at first blush. It's three mana for an artifact that doesn't even, it doesn't have like a tap ability. Uh, what it actually has is it says non-artifact spells you cast have improvised. Your artifacts can help cast those spells. Each artifact you tap after you've done activating mana abilities pays for one colorless. So if you're casting a non-artifact spell, any non-artifact spell, you can tap the Inspiring Statuary for one colorless, but you can also tap any of your artifacts as well for one colorless and get the value out of it. Now, the reason why I like this, and I, I put this as an A, this is a straight up A in my book. Um, it's not going to be amazing in every single deck, but I feel like most decks these days, this is actually going to be way better than you think it's going to be. If you're not in an artifact deck, these are, this is for a non this is for a non artifact deck essentially. Like if you put it in like Brea or something, and ninety percent of your spells are artifacts, this is going to do stone cold nothing, right? But outside of that, this card is going to get so much value, and the main reason why is because treasures are like the most ubiquitous thing in Commander these days. Like imagine like freaking Dockside Smothering Tire and all the other cards that are like Pitiless, Plunderer, and all these other cards that make treasures are just making Inspiring Statuary 10 times better because instead of tapping, instead of sacrificing your treasures to cast your spells, now you just have to tap them. So they're basically, now they all become Mind Stones. Your treasures, your treasure tokens become Mind Stones. This by itself is going to be tapping for one by itself. So the, the floor of this, if you're casting artifact, uh, non-artifact spells, is one, one colorless, which is not good for a three mana rock, but its its ceiling is like two, three, four, five, six bajillion mana every single turn, which is absolutely insane. Obviously, it's it's the the most bananas in like a clue deck um, or a food deck or something like that, where you know you don't have a lot of artifacts. Most of your spells are not artifacts, but you're making a bajillion of artifact tokens in the form of clues and food and treasures, and then it's going to be insane. But it's like treasure decks, food decks, clue decks, all of those, but also just like just regular decks, regular decks that get so good these days. Like you really? just have treasures and you just have art random artifacts on the battlefield. It's so good. You have equipments. You have equipment, you tap your equipments for mana and you still get the value out of them. Oh my God, I love this. It's such, it, you know what? It's an S. I'm putting it, I'm making an S. <laughs> I've convinced myself this is one of the best, one of the best mana rocks of all time. Good day, sir. Good discussion, guys. Good discussion. <laughs> Good day, Not wow. up for negotiation. Oh, End of podcast. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Interesting. No, no, no. What, what, huh. what do you guys think? I'm trying to, so I, we, the rest of us put it at B, and I'm yeah. trying to process Tomer's argument. So obviously, in like a dedicated <laughs> deck, Tomer right now just bumped it up to S, <laughs> like right now. Like I could, I was like, talking, I put it as an A, and then I convinced I, myself of the hype like, like, and the cast. Like if you have clues sugar. and food, obviously this card is insane, which is why we all put it at B, right? Like you know, in that specific deck. Now, yeah. if you don't have a deck, let's say you're just playing a random deck, is Tomer correct? If you're playing Boros, you're playing Dockside, you're playing Smothering Tide. Probably like Curse of Opulence, and you're probably playing Dousing Dagger and other equipment, right? <laughs> is this worth the three CMC rock? Uh, See that in I, that deck, I don't, I don't think it is. 
But that, that, that's like so stacked for the, if it's not worth it in that deck, then it's not worth it in any deck, right? I think so, it's definitely worth no. it in Boros decks. Oh, like a Boros uh. like equipment deck or just like a regular Boros? A regular guess... Boros deck, right? Because you have three clue makers and you have like some random art. You probably have a sword or Gite or skull clamp or something. You have a couple I... of random artifacts, right? Worst it, case, it, it taps to one to how much colorless mana you can afford. Oh, it's colorless, right? Yeah. So it's not good in five color decks. But I think it's so good in so many decks that I put it as an S. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to put it in five-color decks, obviously. Four-color decks, probably not. So, well, actually, if it's a, uh, a four-color, like, clue deck or treasure deck or food deck, I would. Even I, I think Tomer's convinced to, me. Uh, a. Oh, A? <laughs> Here, a. a. We're, I getting, like, there. We're okay. getting there. We're getting there. Come on. S is too okay. much. Yeah, but I, I give it an A. I, I feel like Tomer, as he went on that rant, described almost the very definition of a B-tier card. Like, he described... <laughs> specific <laughs> decks and situations where the card is really good and I feel like that's like literally the definition of V tier so I don't think you convince me I do think it's underrated and people should play it more but I also don't buy into the like just play it in a random deck without even thinking about what synergies I have for it because I don't think it's anywhere near that good like because yeah. in a lot of decks the random artifacts you do have are going to be mana rocks that already tap for presumably colors of mana which is better than an inspiring statue so I do think you need to be clues, you need to be treasures. If you do have a reasonable number of those in your deck, even if that's not the main theme of your deck, okay, I'll give it to you. It's going to be good. But I don't think I would just throw this in a random deck and YOLO it and trust that it's going to be good because it doesn't <laughs> seem right, like B. it will be. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> yes. No! I got no, carried okay. away with Boros. I'm like, it's so good in Boros, but in mono green, to... mono black, and this thing's useless. So B. Well, well, okay, most of these mana rocks are useless in mono green, though. Like, are you going to put freaking Midnight Clock? You can't. You can't because it's blue, Richard. All right? So it's terrible in mono green, Mr. Mono Green Farseek. All right? But, 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 you know, like Black Jacks, like, where are you going to get treasures from, right? Pitiless like... Plunderer? Hello? Pitiless Plunderer is great. But what if that card is not in your deck? And is that card in every deck? Well, what do I, uh, name a mono black commander? Uh, but like Yogmoth. Okay, Pitiless Plunder is in there. <laughs> it's in like we can look this up. We have data on this. I think it's like nine percent of decks or something. So, like, but that means that it's only good if like a lot of staples plunder. synergize with this, right? Which they do synergize with Boros staples, but outside yes. of Boros, you don't have anything. Yeah, I like. What do blue this... decks do? They have nothing. Yeah, I I guess I could I could tap my mana rock that I played to add mint, but I was like, For hold colorless. on, I, I downgraded because they already added. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, so in some in some decks it's not that good. I'll I'll say I'll I'll, I'll say S minus. How about that? S <laughs> final offer. I think I, it's I'm the with, definition I'm of B. This, like this that's is that. yeah, the definition of a B a B card. But it's so good in, in those specific decks. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Specific specific decks. Decks. it's gonna be the best card in, those in decks. specific decks. <laughs> if you finish that guys. sentence, it's a B. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse. I refuse to follow this logic. Yeah, it's it's, it's natural path. We'll just move on to the uh, next one. Richard, tell us about it. <laughs> All right, heraldic banner. Three mana value. When it enters the battlefield, choose a color. Creatures of the chosen color get plus one, plus zero, or your creatures of the chosen color, and then tap to add a mana of the chosen color. So it only adds a single mana, uh, a single color. Pumps your creatures. You would think I would like this because I play the Jank Tribe, so I don't actually like it that much. It's C. Like, <laughs> it, it. all it does is get you... Ki- like, plus one, plus zero just gets you, like wildly killed like it's not enough to do <laughs> anything gets people annoyed it's still a three mana value mana rock which doesn't do much and it doesn't fix your colors so i'd rather just not play it so it's it's just at, like you could put it in wait it doesn't fix like, your looking. colors you only choose one color right like you can't oh, add yeah. multiple colors out you know like well i mean you could choose the color that yeah yeah yeah, yeah but you, you can choose the color mean, right? that you need I but th- I it, think... it's just like okay like nothing special about it I think everything you just said is why I like it. It's spicy enough to not get you killed. Just everybody is a little, like, a little bit upset at you, but not enough <laughs> to get you immediately killed. And this goes in the perfect, like, in the right deck, like, let's say a mono blue deck, or example, my Alela deck. This is perfect, right? Mm-hmm. My my fairies, I get every every blue creature, get plus one, plus zero. 
Uh, and and in token decks, this is fine usually. Uh, so I, I think there are many aggressive shells. I mean, this is that's why I have it at B. It, it goes well in an aggressive shell. Uh, and and look, it, the anthem effect is nice. I, I will always appreciate an anthem effect that also makes me mana. That's also not going to pull a full aggro. I feel you know like. like uh, sorry, go I, ahead. I, I also have it as a C. I think there are decks where it's good. But when you kind of like walk through what it takes for this card to be good, you basically got to be monocolor, very close to it. You also have to be creature heavy and preferably some sort of like go wide weenie style deck. That's where this is actually a good card. But that's a pretty limited number of decks. So I can see an argument for B because there are a very limited number of certain decks where I would be happy to cast it, I think. But the number is small enough that I that I have it down as a C tier just because I think that the number of decks that actually can take advantage of it is not very high. So I, I agree with both of those, but that's kind of why I put it at B because the last deck that I played and I think it was going to go on Commander Clash before this one, this podcast goes up so I can go <laughs> bing... Bing editor, which is me in the future. Remember that? Um, I played Adeline, and Adeline is all about it's a mono white deck, it's all about go wide, it's very efficient at making one ones. Heraldic Banner is like insane in those style of decks where you take one ones and you make them two ones when they're attacking. You're like drastically increasing the amount of power that you're putting on the battlefield. And yet, like, compared to, you know, a two-drop, like an Arcane Signet, you know, that taps for one white, uh, if I'm, am I willing to pay one more mana for an Arcane Signet that pumps all my creatures by plus one power? And the answer in, in Go Wide decks is, yeah, like, if if all my, if, if it's a monocolored deck and it goes wide, then this is an excellent uh, mana rock. Like, it's one of the best ones in, in that deck. Is it good outside of those? No. Like you need to have you need to have all your creatures being pumped. You need to be go wide. Um yeah. otherwise it's just not a good mana rock. But if you if you do meet those two criteria, this is like one of the best, I think, in in the thing. Like just dropping an arcane signet that costs one extra that pumps all my things by plus one plus oh. Yeah, that's, I, yeah. that's legit. I play this in my Shadrix, uh, Shadrix deck, I play it in my Alela deck. Any token deck that can really uh like a, use the anthem effect uh is is gonna want it. It does. It, it's versatile. It, it gives you the colors, that, or it gives you a color that you want, and then it gives you an anthem effect. So that's two for one, mm-hmm. and it doesn't die to a board wipe. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I mean a, a creature board wipe. That is. <laughs> I, I think hearing both of you talk about it, I'll I'll give it a B. I'll I'll go with B on it. I think like you're correct. There are certain decks where. It is very good. I think it's just that it's not the style of decks I play, <laughs> which is so for me personally, <laughs> like I'm not normally playing go ride creature style deck. So for me, it probably has less value than it does overall. But you're right in the right deck. It probably is the best three mana rock that you can play. Richard Bird Tribal. Yeah, bur- I, I, I would bird definitely bird would bird and bird tribal. No. Skeletons. <laughs> no. All right, Mr. Fledgling Osprey makes the cover. <laughs> Literally skeletons. Like, I, like, I would rather before. play a three mana one one on turn three than you like, are playing play a three mana one one right. on turn three. <laughs> <laughs> like because because you want to drop a coat of arms or a beastmaster ascension to end the game, not deal an incremental five damage. Right. So I'd rather ramp and ah. card draw into a finisher. You know, play a bunch of 1-1 one, one offsprays that everyone disrespects, then play a heraldic <laughs> banner, which everyone will kill, because like, oh my god, his birds are two ones now. We've got to okay. deal with that, is right? That real? <laughs> so I, but, I actually, but there, so, you know, I don't like not, totally disagree with you guys. I think happen. your logic is fine, but I think it's somewhere between a B and a C, right? But I don't play this in a lot of my tribal decks, right? Sometimes I do, and it's usually a mono-white deck, because I'm so desperate for ramp, <laughs> right? <laughs> and like, some like, card value, right? But, you know... Like, I agree, right? Like if you're playing fairies, rogues, you know, like, go wide, white weenie, it's good. But I think those cases are a lot less. So I, I would overall put it at a C. All right. We almost got you. <laughs> almost. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Another another card that is Ooh. is pretty uh, creature-focused. Seth, tell us about Strixhaven Stadium. Ah, so Strixhaven Stadium, three mana. 
it taps to add a colorless mana and you put a point counter on it. And then whenever a creature deals combat damage to you, you got to remove a point counter. And then whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to an opponent, you put a point counter on it. And then if it has 10 or more point counters, remove them all and that player loses a game. So this is the rare mana rock, maybe the only three mana mana rock that can actually kill your opponent. And when this card was first previewed, I was thinking it was gonna, was gonna be a card that would go in every deck. I was thinking, okay, I'm just always gonna play this. Maybe there's not high chance uh, or high odds that I'm actually gonna kill someone with it, but why wouldn't I play this? Because I have this upside that maybe I will kill them with it. Maybe the game goes long and I tap it a bunch of times and get counters on it. However, after playing with it, I realized that I underestimated how much hate this card draws, <laughs> and it really <laughs> does create this sub game where people are gonna try to attack you and people are very, very scared, even with a counter on it, two counters on it. The conversation at the table very quickly turns into how are we gonna manage this Strike Saving Stadium? Who can kill this Strike Saving Stadium? And the fact that it draws so much hate has made me drop it down to a B tier where it only goes in certain decks, which is mostly go wide decks, decks that have an actual realistic shot of getting 10 counters on it relatively quickly. Because I think the downside of being arch enemy for playing a three mana mana rock is not worth the upside that maybe you kill, some with it, uh, kill someone with it in a lot of decks. You gotta be a deck that can really, you know, get those counters on it pretty quickly for it to be worth it. You wait. Doesn't everybody just play as Arch Enemy at their table? Or is that just me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the weird thing is, like, I, I have the exact opposite approach to this card as Seth. When I when this card was previewed, I figured this would be a trap card because everybody would attack you to make sure you wouldn't get the, the points. But at least my experience on Commander Clash and on the stream... The, per the person who has it always gets away with it. Like people disregard the stadium, at least in my experiences, <laughs> they disregard the stadium and then somebody dies. Like this is a mana rock for three that kills people. And I've seen it like, I think I've seen it eight times between commander clash and stream. And I want to say like seven out of those eight times, somebody died because of strict safe and stadium, which is the absolutely, but, cast but <laughs> no, 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 no. Still the stadium, true though. The stadium <laughs> triggers and, and kills somebody. Like rem I, I'm pretty sure, uh, Krim played it in like the, the squirrel deck and killed somebody with it. I'm not sure. Uh, if how many other times we, we've had it on Commander Clash, but on stream, like I remember, just like somebody plays Strixhaven Stadium, Stadium I'm like, oh okay, it's a stadium, you know, it's whatever, and they'll ha they won't even be like a go wide deck; they'll just like have cr they'll just be a creature deck, and then they just like freaking, you know, two two combat steps, uh, somebody dies, and it's just like so it's so bonkers, and they keep getting away with it. So I, maybe I think it depends on the play group. But it depends that's why on the it deck. In. And, and the play group, but like the fact that this is able to kill somebody, well, oftentimes you could politic that. And I, that's how I use this. I think this card has a lot of politics to it. Like, hey, there's a problematic player here. And, and it, if we, if they've got like, you know, if they lack a board presence, you're gonna, you're gonna be able to kill them quickly. And so like, this could be good against the control decks that you, like, you know, that you, like my decks that have like two creatures, like Snapcaster won't get there. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I think this is exactly the tool you want in a specific deck. I wouldn't play. I have this at a B because of that specific reason. I think this is strong, very strong in a token deck, a go wide deck, some kind of like low to the ground birds, you know, whatever. Birds. Um, I, I think any kind of deck that goes low to the ground or is planning on being somewhat aggressive, this gives you a realistic way to be aggressive, even against infinite life. So there's there's a lot here. And I, I love it in those decks. I don't think it's playable in any other deck because it's still colorless. So it, you're mm. not even using it for the mana part. Realistically, this I don't even know if I would call this a three mana mana rock. Because when I have this, I don't play it on three. It's well, a win condition, yeah. I, I, I hold this until somebody. I have a board presence and then I play it. So, but... This that if so in terms of a mana rock, this might actually be bad and should be like an F. In terms of a win condition that could make mana in the meantime, okay, then maybe that's why I'll put it at B. 
So all I, around it averages out to me, yes. Between an F and a B, it averages out to B. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not how that works. I, I think in the terms of averages, I'm doing it wrong, but whatever. Like I, <laughs> this is why we need. Chrom this is why we're the chromatic lantern. Yeah, yeah, gang. yeah. Once again, <laughs> face roll. We <laughs> like whatever. Averages, bath. <laughs> this is for blockers. Yeah, 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 yeah. We worry about that later. <laughs> yeah. So I play this card a lot. Because uh, I, you know, I put it in bird decks. I put it in other decks, and this has never worked the way I wanted to work. And I agree with Seth. It needs to be downgraded because it just gets you killed. And I would almost downgrade it to a C. Like I feel like you have to really build around it, and it's just a combo piece. Like if you build an Edric deck, and then you slap a propaganda down, like maybe you can get some work done. But other than that, like people are like, oh, three points, better kill them, <laughs> right? You know, like. Oh, nine points. Are you sure you're going to kill the threat or are you going to kill me? I don't know. Better kill it, right? So <laughs> it really doesn't accomplish what you want. You need to build very specifically around it. So I, I would say somewhere between a B and a C. Like, it looks good, but it's 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 like a planeswalker that doesn't protect itself, right? It's scary, yet it can't protect itself, so it gets you killed. So you might as well just not play it. Or like Krim said, hold it. Till you have 10 creatures, drop it and like kill someone in one shot, right? Like, you can't play it incrementally. You can't just drop half a combo piece on the battlefield and expect it to go well. So in that regards, it sucks as a mana rock because your mana rock's a combo piece. Everyone will kill you. So I don't really like it, although it has potential in the right deck, right? It, it actually has potential to be the best card in the deck, but... That's very narrow. And... It's it's never in between. It's just the it's the best or worst card ever that you draw. Yeah, <laughs> but it gets you killed too many times. Like it's it's the anti Richard card, right? Like you have nothing. <laughs> Everyone thinks you're the threat. You can't coast. Like you just get immediately murdered. It's very loud done. as a I card, it... but yeah. I think yeah. It, it's still a solid B because the right type it of deck the game. can yeah like can really take advantage of it and actually protect you. Yeah. So. I, I think that's the definition of a B card, right? Like, it's really good in the decks that can make use of it. Yeah? Yeah. I, I see it as a win condition that also happens to tap for mana. Like Crimson, like, you don't always necessarily have to play it out, but, like, you know, sometimes you can. I don't know. I guess it's, it's very meta-dependent because, like, in my experience, like, I never see it getting the hate that I feel like it deserves. And it just wins the game. It's a free man. It wins the game. It's crazy. Anyway. It doesn't win the game. It kills one person. It kills somebody, but that that's a win to me. Like, say, hey, Seth, remember that time you, you, you died? <laughs> and I'm like, all right, you can kill me now. <laughs> Um, all right, moving on. Uh, Krim, tell us about this little this little doodad. All right, so Cursed Mirror. It's a two and a red, and it adds a red. As it enters the battlefield, you may have it become a copy of any creature on the battlefield uh, until end of turn, and it gains haste. I think this card sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I have this at a D. And apparently, really? everybody else here really likes it. But but I I, I don't even know where I would want this. Like, mm. am I using this to combo off? Like, it, like it looks like that's the only way to use it. And even then, th is this not just another Strixhaven uh, stadium, except worse? <laughs> because like it's only a one-time use uh, for for it to copy whatever, right? And I I just don't view that as valuable enough. I I think this just is a three mana at a red. I don't even care about the second part. That wall of text behind it. Almost seems like it's going to be irrelevant most of the time. Hmm. That's a hot take. <laughs> so I will say I haven't really got to play with this card because it's one of the commander precon cards that's not on magic online. So I don't have a Yay! lot of first hand <laughs> experience playing with it. But I have it as a B. Uh I think that it's a card that I would play in almost all mono red decks. That's what I, how I kind of look at this, kind of uh, all the red midnight clock almost, where if you're mono colored, you don't have that many good mana rock options. This does have a reasonable amount of upside, like getting a copy of a creature. Maybe there's some combo that I'm not familiar with that you could do with it, but I'm just thinking of it of as a mana rock that can come down as a hasty creature and smash someone for a turn. And in a mono color deck, there's not that many options for mana rocks. I think it would make the cut there. Once you get into like three colors or whatever, then it loses a lot of its appeal to me. So, so I got it as a B, but like I said, I haven't really gotten to brew with it or play with it a lot yet. 
even in a monocolor deck, if I were to play this, it's not like Midnight Clock because it doesn't do enough, right? Like Midnight Clock potentially refuels you. This just gives you maybe a body for a turn. Think, I'd rather play something that is colorless in this spot. I kind of feel like utility. Just like three mana make a red mana is like sometimes making the barn a mono red deck just because there's not like that many mana rock options. But what about the fact that like if somebody has an Eternal Witness on the battlefield, you copy it, right? You get the ETB. So you're playing it in your Grawl deck? Do you? No, Does no, it enter but it's the like, battlefield? Oh, like somebody it, it copies it's a anybody's creature. But yeah. it's only until end of turn, so I don't know. Like, but it, you get it, the it, ETB. Yeah, you get the ETB, but I feel like at the cost Wait, do you of get playing the ETBs? This, yeah, I'm trying to enters, actually read this over. As it enters over. the battlefield, you may have it become a copy of any creature oh. on the battlefield until end of turn. But it's already entered the battlefield. Yeah, it's Wait, entered how, the what, battlefield. What, what is the casual image the battlefield. It's as it enters the battlefield. No. Uh, as we, uh, it enters the battlefield, you may have it become a. I think it should work, right? Isn't that what a clone yeah. says? Yeah. yeah. Like you may have a a image enter as a copy of any. Okay. So it enters. So it's should... not as it enters. It's a ter- slightly different hmm. text. Wow. Hmm. We don't even know how the card works. How can we read yeah, it? <laughs> good. Good. I, I, okay, I could be as... playing it wrong this entire time. Because, like, I have it in my Perforo stack, which is all about big creatures. So, like,. Uh, I, I'll cheat in a big creature, and then I'll play. It does work Christmas. that way. It does yeah, work the, that way. according to Gatherer, it actually does copy ETBs, so you can yeah, so get ETBs ETB. out of it. So, like, even, so even hmm. with that though, that's just I don't know. That feels kind of medium, like so medium at best. At best, it's an until end of. T- I would play. Uh, what is it? Uh, mirror image, or whatever the three mana mirror is that copies anything that you want. Sure, that I does add mana though. It doesn't add mana, but I'd rather just play that instead because it can copy anything. It can copy a better mana rock. It can copy, you know what I mean? Like, it, sure, it costs two mana to activate that ability, but this can copy at any point, right? This, or that can copy at any point. This card just does only that one time, and I just don't like that at three mana. I feel like I'm there's always going to be a ten, creature to copy. I'm not sure I, there's I, ten I, better mana here. rocks in red. Well, that's what I'm saying, but I, even even then, I, I like... The if it, if I went with a colorless utility mana rock, that'd be better. So I initially yeah. went with B, but as we were talking about other cars, like I'm looking ahead on the list, I'm like, is Curse Mirror really a B? What was I thinking? Mm-hmm. And I think Krim has convinced me because let's say you play it on curve. It's a three mana mana rock, and those are bad, right? Because to me, that's disadvantage. You're just going to get wiped in two turns. If you're just holding it for like turn 11, it's just literally like steal someone's ETB. You can just play one of those cards that are better, right? Like you're not going to turn 11, make it a mana rock. That flexibility doesn't matter anymore. So I would rather play like an MDFC or something. Like, why not just play a Threaten or something, right? Like just yep. like take your, like, you know, play the bad Threaten or the bad Fling, right? That's an MDFC and I can take your creature. It's like so situational that I don't think it's worth doing. However, I will mm-hmm. say that there are combo combos you can do with this like the magna cdh deck has a combo with this card which i couldn't put on tomoto so i can see if you have like a combo deck that needs this where you're copying etbs and, and doing things like it has a purpose but as a general mana rock i would just not play it. like just just play something that copies etbs like a clone or something like maybe there's no effect like that in red this is the only way you can get it i I don't know. I so we we haven't had a chance to play this online, and so like most of my games are online games. But I have played it a decent amount in my Perforos deck for Mono Red. I think this is one of the best Mono Red Mana Rocks, um, just because it, it always felt like I had a good target for it. Like I I think it's not like the greatest early game, um, but I've had many situations where like uh, I will uh, see somebody. Uh, I'll, I'll be. It's turn three. Somebody does a turn three Wood Elves before me, or not Wood Elves. Sorry, uh, like a like a Far Haven, Far Haven Elf or something before me, or like a Spring Bloom Druid or something. And you just like copy that. You get your Far Haven Elf. You get a Mountain on the battlefield, and this is essentially like a Warm Power Stone or something <laughs> at that point. Um, and I find that pretty good. And then late game, there's always like something to copy that seems pretty good, and it's better than just like a, a random. Uh, top deck mana rock like an arcane signet off the top because like if somebody just has like a six six flyer or something on the battlefield and you copy it and you immediately swing and hit somebody for six with your mana rock uh, that can like completely swing games in your favor 
Um, so, so I don't so know. I've just always to go off on a tangent, is is like fork a good card? Like, can can you rely on someone doing something good for you to like make if it fork, good? Like, but the, if, know, if they cycling. cultivate and you fork it, this is great, right? Yeah, but, <laughs> but what if they don't? What if fork had cycling on it, like cycle yeah. one? Would would it be a good card? I think so. This one is like worst case, it's a overcosted two mana rock that you have to pay three for. Yeah, they pay an extra mana. But best case, <laughs> that was a it, very no, hilarious no. way to describe that. Okay, <laughs> it's well, an okay, it's a three rock, two mana mana rock that you have to pay one more mana for. <laughs> no, it's, okay. it's an overcosted <laughs> rock. It's not. It's not the best three rock if you're not copying anything with it. But sometimes there will be creatures on the battlefield that will be really high value to copy. I don't know. I, like I mean, somebody has a mull drifter or something, and just like draw two off that. And then you have if a mana rock. I just feel like, it, like Richard pointed out earlier, like if you're curving out and you play this on three, it's not, it's your, whatever you're copying is not going to be great, right? At but, best. And then but then if you you're, have if you're the equivalent of a chromatic lantern. <laughs> no, chromatic lantern is the business. Chromatic lantern is the, uh, that's, that's training wheels. We like beautiful, that card. Beautiful card. This but card, I mean, the floor it, is a three mana mana rock, which isn't yes. the end of the world. So the floor is relatively high, and then the ceiling is. Copying a Mole Drifter and drawing two cards, or copying an Eternal Witness. Maybe it doesn't happen that much, but I don't know. I feel like the floor is high enough that in Mono Red in specific, I feel like I would just always play it in Mono Red. I think outside in, of Mono Red, then it loses some appeal, but... In Mono Red, I would probably play something else there. <laughs> like, it, like legitimately, I think that's the way... I think that's where Richard and I are lying on this like one, because it just feels like I, if you need something that adds red... <laughs> I honestly would almost like it, this. Just edges out a basic land, like, like about, you have diamonds and stuff. Like the yeah, problem like, is I how many that. three CMs, more, th how many three mana value rocks are in your deck, right? And how many have we rated S or A already that could go in mono red? <laughs> so like, where is this going exactly, right? Like to me, you play like one or two three mana value rocks tops. Right? And you will probably play one that is very specific to that archetype, like maybe Heraldic Banner or something, right? That you can synergize with. So, like, where is Cursed Mirror going in as, like, general utility? I think Heraldic... That, that's uh, the like, question. Heraldic has more utility. This is going in maybe that one deck that mogged the deck. Other than I that... Thought, well, and you think Heraldic Banner is more utility? I mean, yeah. what about, like, in what general? About, like, like, hmm. No, no, no. Like, like in the go wide deck, you would put that in, right? Then you yeah, wouldn't like, there put are more Cursed go wide in, decks. Right? If you're in a control deck, you put Midnight Clock or something. You don't put Mirror in, right? Like, where well, does it actually thread. fit? Because... What, about, what about, like, okay, so Perforous, I, I still would say Perforous is an excellent example. You have, like, you know, 6-6 six, six dragons or whatever. You play Cursed Mirror. You get a yeah. copy of that, and you smash face. But also, like, Felden of the Third Path is another popular one, and I know Seth played that. I think that one's a no-brainer. As well as even an artifact, so it has artifact synergies. Like you can, yeah. uh, since it is an, yeah. a, a mana rock that's an artifact synergy, you can like you know deredi it or goblin welder it after using its ability, and then you can get it back from the graveyard too, so you can ETV copy it again, which is also this like super fun. So I like guess, I feel like uh, my feeling is ish and, and ready like Magda, but other than that, like there are more go wide decks that that can go in. So I feel like this yeah. the window of usage on this card is like it, it tops Stompy. out at like maybe three decks. I think it's Stompy. Mono Red Stompy is where it's really good. I, hmm. I feel like every time I build a monocolor deck and I start trying to add my like 10 or 12 ramp spells, after I get past like the first six, I'm really like scraping some pretty bad ramp options in a color like Mono Red. So it's, I don't know. Do you just not play as many mana rocks and just like don't play ramp in your Mono Red deck? I just feel like, I don't well, know. If I feel like it makes a cut by default because there's just not a lot of competition <laughs> once you get to like mana rock number eight for just a mono more red deck or Yeah, more MBFCs. Because it's Fury. I do. Oh. I play all those too. <laughs> so once you've already played every MBFC and then you're also looking for a, how many deck spots are you now using for ramp? Seth can only put in like six MDFCs in mono red and he's like, what do I do now? I know. Yeah, got to fill those this, slots with something. But like this realistically, is... your, your ramp is already filled up. Now we're going to go yeah. way off topic, right? But you have like Soul Ring, right? And then you have Arcane Signet, Signet and then you have the actual Signets, then you have Diamonds, Fallware Stone, What's Mind the uh, Stone. thing that reduces everything by one? Uh, the, each each color has one. The yeah the, the medallion medallion uh, medallions, medallions, medallions yeah. Sure. yeah 
like realistically, you don't have room. And like, if you're gonna put three CMC, like, would you just play Hedron Archive or something? Like, would you like scale your the rest of your ramp way higher, like Gilded Lotus or something? Right? Like, hmm. how many three mana value rocks are you playing? Because I find I cut most of them. So the ones that make the cut need to be exceptionally good. Right. As yeah, opposed okay. to like, okay, it it cycles itself. It's a card, right? Like, I might as well just have done something else, right? I don't know. Like, if somebody has like, you 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 draw this later on, and somebody has like a Rex Sage on the battlefield, and you literally like copy Rex Sage, you blow up an important artifact yeah. or enchantment. There there, there are it's, many situations that we could draw up, right? That you can copy that, but I feel like on average, it's just gonna get some mediocre like you know effect that probably won't do anything unless. This is something that's going to win you the game or as a part of a combo or in a deck that can reoccur it like Duretti. You know what I mean? Like, or you could sack it and then just keep putting it back with like Goblin Welder or something like that. Otherwise, <sighs> then that's better a, than a D. Even, even a red, though, like, what's the most played red creature in the format? Dockside. You also have Imperial Recruiters. God, like, if you copy Dockside, even Dock in your this. deck, you, oh you're probably going to have good targets. And that's <laughs> not even counting your opponent's deck. Like, I'm not saying it's a S or anything, but D seems, yeah. I don't know. D seems low to me. I think it, it sucks. Just, like, it's true. It copies Dockside. Yeah, it copies, copies Dockside. 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 It's an that's S. Nice. It's an well, S. Mono red. That's true. <laughs> like the fact that it copies CDH Dockside staple. and maybe like a Rex Age, yeah, and like Ewit. That that's these are all cards that get played, right? But yeah, Noxious I, Hawk I, or something. Mostly, this is leaning on the fact that yes, it's still three mana when I have all these two mana rocks already, and then I have the like a few slots for threes. I just mm. think this sucks and is is better served as another card, an MDFC even. Uh, like yeah, so like MDFC or just another spell. How about this? Just another threat. Well, yeah. I hope Wizard puts it online so we can actually play it and settle this argument. I've only played it every on spell there. table, so I I don't know yeah. what it's like on on at, like you know if it gets on Moto and then I get to see yeah. it more often. So, all right, for the sake of 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 covering more stuff, we're gonna move on to probably a less spicy take, I guess. Um. I think it's on me. Yeah. Coalition Relic. This was like a uh, commander staple uh, when I started playing back in 2011, like a decade ago. Uh, this is a three mana rock um, that taps to add one mana of any color, or you can tap to put a charge counter on Coalition Relic. And then at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, you remove all charge counters from Coalition Relic and you add one mana of any color for each charge counter removed this way. Um, so basically what you could be doing is if you, if you don't tap it for mana, like this is the, the basic use of it is if you don't tap it for mana, you don't need it for mana on one turn, you can tap it to put a charge counter after your pre-combat main phase. And then the, the next, your next turn cycle, the next time it's your pre-combat main phase, you can remove that charge counter and you can tap it for mana on the same turn. So if you essentially skip a turn of using it, you can make two mana off it instead of the usual one. Uh, if you skip a turn of using it, that's like the most basic usage of it, but there's, you know, synergy potential. I didn't like this card back in the day. <laughs> uh, I thought chromatic, uh, like as soon as chromatic Lancer was printed, I was like, oh my God, I'm just, I'm just removing this relic insta from all my decks and putting in this sweet, sweet lantern, which cannot be beat. Um, and I've never changed my opinion on this card before. I, I have, I, I remember it was just like an overpriced, like it was super expensive back in the day. It was like $10. Because we didn't have uh, the, the the holy lantern uh, yet, uh, but uh, nowadays I still think it's poop, and I don't remember the last time I put it in any of my decks, even five color decks. Um, and that's pretty. It, that's it for me. I, I put it on a as a as a as a C. Yeah. Wait, did I? Where did yeah. I put it? Yeah, I put yeah, it as a C, and I think C's, that's charitable. Except Seth holding. I, I think it's, I think it's a Wait. yeah. I think it's just like a straight <laughs> yeah, up C, Seth, and did... that's charitable. Just like real quick, so I gotta ask Seth, <laughs> how is this better than Chromatic Lantern? Oh, it's way. Yeah, it's what way is going better. on here? When does your Hold Chromatic on. Lantern add two mana? It never adds two you mana. You have to take a turn off of using it. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So, so the most often on the turn you play your mana rock, let's say on turn three. Unless you have a one mana play, you're not going to use that mana anyway. So you're playing your mana rock and you're kind of letting that mana go to waste. Your 
uh, if you play a coalition relic, you can get that mana during your next turn, essentially. So you play this on turn three, you tap it at the charge counter, you untap your next turn, you're gonna have two mana, you make your land drop, you have your six mana on turn four. It's like a worn power stone, essentially, in that scenario. Like, yeah, it doesn't tap for two mana every turn, but in that one turn, that mana burst is actually very powerful. Uh, you also get like charge counter shenanigans and so forth, which isn't enough to like move it up a tier in my ranking. But I actually think that this is, as far as just mana fixing mana rocks, I think that Coalition Relic, I think it's actually better than Chromatic Lantern. I would have it as, without having any additional upside, just as far as making mana, I think this is one of the best mana rocks that exist at three mana. The upside of being able to make two mana when you need it, I think is really huge. Uh, so yeah, I, I really I, like, I thought, I like it. So you have to use it, right? Like if you have charge counters on it, you have to use it on that. Yes, yeah, yeah, the charge counter is like, gonna go away. Yeah. yeah on your upkeep either way so you, so. okay so you get an initial burst when you first cast it i, I still was, stick with c this is like so situ like okay so maybe you can un so you untap you have six mana on turn four if you're lucky that's mm -hmm. i mean i, that's I like pretty that. good i like that i agree with seth on that so i'd give it maybe a c plus i still will never run it but then so what if you <laughs> then it'll just produce us one for the rest of the game is that good enough pretty much yeah, I've but seen, I've like but, seen no one ever play. I think I've seen it once on Commander Clash, like in like five seasons. <laughs> if I mean, it really is a like, why does Seth never run it? <laughs> I maybe maybe put it in Traxa, maybe because what you could do is you could like tap it to put a charge counter on it, and then you proliferate it, and then boom, and then you're, and you're adding three the next turn instead of just two. I think so. That's like uh, one deck. <laughs> I think the reason <laughs> the reason that you don't see me play it is I don't think you see me play many of these cards, honestly. Like, I mean, Skyclave's an Lantern, S, so. and I forget about playing Skyclave sometimes because I just really don't play many three-mana rocks anymore. <laughs> yeah, then they should all just be down a tier, right? Like, yeah, okay. Like, That's if they all yeah, suck, like... we, we're not going to pick the best one and call it an S. We'll just call it a D, right? <laughs> but I, I feel like it's not a case where it's only good in certain decks. I think it's generically good in any deck, but three mana mana rocks maybe just aren't what they used to be a few years ago. <laughs> and that's not the funny coalition I, relic. Yeah. With that in mind, that's exactly why I think I graded the way I did though, right? Like three mana mana rocks need to do something, right? They need to have something other than add mana and or stick around forever. And and Skyclave pretty much does that, right? So that's why it's at an S. Strix Haven Stadium ranked higher because it can actually kill somebody. Uh, you get an Anthem effect out of Heraldic Banner. And Chromatic Lantern higher because it, though it doesn't add two mana, it fixes the colors. And I think that's better than maybe ramping plus one uh, every other turn. <laughs> where, like, so I, I, don't, I just don't see many situations where I want this card. Like, at three mana, I definitely don't want this card. At two mana, okay, this would be very good. But at three mana, this is just, like, kind of unplayable. Hmm. It's like, this is like a, a low C to a high D for me. If, two, wow. if it was two mana, it would be busted, though. It would be yeah, yeah, this would be very good at two like, mana, right? This would be like an mass. S. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but the fact that it just doesn't do enough at three mana. Mm. Like, the cards that I ranked, you'll I, I do play them. You will see me play them. And... That, and the only reason why is because they do something outside of add mana. I and like aren't, I li and aren't curse mirror because that card is caca poo poo. <laughs> but I wish I, just, I do hope I petition. Add mana. It, it, it fixes I've, my colors. That to me, I value. I think obviously this is all anecdotal <laughs> and whatnot and like very relative. But I value the fixing. But I, you know what? Whatever. You can call me a, 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 a cruel the, ultimatums the are uncastable. Otherwise, the problem I have with that argument, Graham, is you never have more than like two lands on the battlefield anyway. So yeah. how well, much fixing are you getting uh, out of a chromatic uh, land? Uh, but these three lands that I do have <laughs> add any color I need, though, Seth, and that's where I value the versatility. I, I guess. <laughs> That's true. If you're only going to have three lands, so. they better be yeah. good. <laughs> they, I need them to be stack. three like, mana confluences. Well, it's they like don't even Necropotence, like. Archmage's Charm, Cruel <laughs> Ultimatum. Like, what are these color requirements that you have in here, right? Now, yes, the, the viewers Snap, and Snapcaster, listeners... Cryptic, you know, like, like, I just can't cast any of these spells without the Cryptics are lantern. greedy as hell, and that makes sense. You right. <laughs> you right. It's That's actually why. a five-color Grixis deck, too. Seth is greedy in his uh, own ways, okay. but I'm greedy in the colors that I need to cast my spells. Like, I want to be in Christmas land when it comes to my mana base, and Chromatic Lantern does that. This does, like, the, 
like coalition relic doesn't do enough for me just doesn't do enough you've you've convinced me to drop it to b all these arguments i think <laughs> a is probably too high i don't play I it that c often I'll, I'll give it a i'll give it a b i'll give it a b but i'm not going to c because it's it's better than that Two all right mana. peer pressure Two has mana. succeeded <laughs> All right, we're moving on. We're moving on to a new Mana Rock. Uh, we're going to tell us about this one. All right. The Celestis, three mana value. It's legendary. Uh, basically, it becomes day when it enters a battlefield, if that thing hasn't been set yet. Tap, add one mana of any color. Three tap. If it's night, it becomes day. Otherwise, it becomes night. Do this only as a sorcery. When day becomes night or night becomes day, you gain one life, you draw a card, if you do discard. So basically, you make everyone play werewolves, and when it changes day night, you gain a life and loot. I, I am baffled I as to why it. you guys think this is good. I've read it again. Who thinks this is good? Again. Me and Seth think it's good. Oh, I have this as I mean, a D. I'm like, why would you ever play this? Richard put this as a B, uh, a D, feel, which is like Stone Cold like, unplayable. Yeah, that's like yeah. never play it, right? Well, I, I mean, love it. Why would you play this? I, I, so I think it's got to like one yeah, deck. Even then, werewolf. very questionable. You're playing a three man of mana rock. <laughs> I mean, like I'm I'm more in the direction with you, Richard, because like we, we saw Tomer play wolves. You know, we saw Seth play wolves. How hard was it to get it to nighttime? <laughs> right, like every. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty hard to get it to nighttime. Even with the control deck, I was able to keep it from getting to nighttime, right? Can, so. I, can I sell you on it, Krim? Yeah, go ahead. Think, think about this at the table. Everybody is playing a fun game of magic, and then suddenly you play this on the battlefield, and then you're like, guys, it's time to track day and night mechanic for the rest <laughs> of the game. <laughs> and everybody, nobody else has day or night cards, so now suddenly they have to do this thing that's lame and they don't want to do but you forced it on the table and now for the rest of the game everybody has to double check whether it became day or night or if it shifted that's why and that's because and that's what you did but so no, the, it's the ultimate the, troll card to, to troll and annoy the table kicks it up from a d to a c for me okay all right so so like that is a factor in why i bumped it like like that when i graded it like ha, okay. ha, i'm willing to play chaos moon so i'm definitely willing to play this and chaos moon in the same deck so but other than that it doesn't do anything it, it's only good in wolves not even good in wolves. I'm gonna cut it. <laughs> All you really? do is loot. Like you don't it. even do anything. I think, I think this is well, good it, in wolves. It turns. It turns. We just played. We just played wolves on Commander Clash, and even though Tovalar helps a lot, it's still not that easy to flip back and forth. Like that's still a really big challenge. Having a mana rock that for three mana can just do that whenever you want to and flip to your the good side of your wolves is. I think that makes it an ultra staple of wolves. I could not imagine building Tovalar or another werewolf deck and not playing this. <laughs> yeah. I, I may have been out of line. <laughs> <It's good laughs> we need, we need all the help again. Remember when everybody was complaining the Tovalar is too powerful and then we actually see the wolves in action? It's like, actually, this is exactly how powerful Tovalar needs to be, actually. <laughs> yeah. But it's literally good in one deck, not even yeah. one archetype, no. like literally okay. one that, deck. That is the I only deck that can play it. I will run it in looting slash uh, some. Some graveyard decks, some. You know and why? You will never because... loot, and you might as well oh, play yeah. a Merfolk looter. Loot. It's so okay. hard it to loots, get it to nighttime. If, if it loots once, then it's already pretty decent. If it was a mana <laughs> rock that looted one time, I'd be like, all right, that's that's pretty decent. If it loots more than one time, and it will, it will, it will loot like two times. And then if you're really lucky, then it will be loot. If it, okay, is if is that good says, enough at three mana, Tomer? At three mana, if if it's a mana rock that says add, tap to add one colorless, gain two life, loot two times over the span of like three turns. Well, over the span of like two turns, I think. That's what I'm going to hope for. I'm hoping for Christmas land, all right? I, if, if, okay, if it's a mana rock that says tap for one mana, three mana, tap for one mana, gain two life, loot two times, I think it's it's definitely playable. Mm -hmm. and, yep. And I don't think... I don't think that's that unlikely because while it's really hard to have no one cast a spell for their turn in commander a lot of the times, the two spells in a turn is pretty easy. So if you can use this to flip mm -hmm. once, you should get an automatic free flip back. Flip so again. for every activation, you should get those two loots. And that, I don't know. That's I think it's actually anything, like, unless you're well, actually playing yeah, a looting deck, right? <laughs> 
if we play against Krim, you know we're going to it's going to flip no, tonight because no, he's going to miss even, his land drops and he's going to skip the turn. I I still do something, right? Like I, maybe it doesn't affect the board, but I you'll accidentally I skip through your combat phase, okay, and then you'll be fair, like, oh well, fair. I guess, there I guess is I that. Do anything. <laughs> I may lose the interface, but like outside of that, I, that's I, the bet I'm. That's like the like that's your best case scenario. You have me at the table and I accidentally F6 or I button mash my MMO mouse too much. <laughs> right? Because I'm impatient. But other than that, I I just don't think that's enough. I don't think that's enough at three mana. Even if you looted all three times and gained three life, I don't think that's enough at a three mana mana rock. Because you're I usually assume that these aren't gonna last for more than two turn cycles. Any, any any mana rock I have might not last for more than two to three turn cycles from everybody blowing it up. And and if it has lasted, I feel like there's also a higher impact play I could be making. Like, any of the aforementioned, like, stuff that we had named is better, right? Like, Heraldic Banner uh, could give me an anthem. So, like, there's just, maybe not Curse Mirror, but, like, everything else just seems better than than this. Uh, like, if, if I didn't like Curse Relic, I definitely, I don't even think I'll like this. So... <laughs> I don't know. The, at three mana, it's too. It's just doesn't do enough. It just doesn't do enough for me. Like, I, I think decks. all mana rocks at three mana value start at a D, and you need to show me enough good things to. Like I only have like two slots wolves. or three slots. You put in my it deck, as a right? D, Richard. Wolves. So it starts at a D, and only one, like literal one deck, not even an archetype, like literally one deck, <laughs> right? That's not enough in my opinion. So yes, play to werewolves. Deck. But every other deck you can imagine, including looting decks, I would argue, do something else, right? Like, that's it. All right. All right. Well, I don't feel strongly enough to defend the Celestis, honestly. <laughs> I think it's really good in Werewolves. I'm going to try it out in Graveyard decks. Honestly, it's, it's so new that I haven't really had that much experience with it. So we'll just move on. And Krim, tell us about this old school staple, uh, Mana Rock. That he so hates. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Warren Power Stone, for those that don't know, it adds two colorless. And it enters the battlefield tapped. This was good. At a point, this was good. But it has fallen so far for me at three mana. Adding two mana every turn, but it's colorless mana. I, look, I don't like Coalition Relic, and this is maybe... This is, like, slightly better than Coalition Relic, I guess. Uh, but... <sighs> The end, it always tapped, tapped for two. Entering tapped, three mana, adding two colorless. Nah, I, I'm not feeling this. I'm not feeling this at all for three mana. It just, it's too vanilla. By 2021 standards and how many cards that have come out since then, this is just too vanilla. It doesn't do anything. It, 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 it doesn't it at least become a threat. Become like a key rune or something like that. But even then, key runes are bad. So <laughs> I, I don't think this does anything. So uh, two mana, whatever. I, I I think there's much better at three mana. There's so much better at three mana. You put this as a D. Yeah, I think this is unplayable D. by 2021 Unplayable? Standards. I think it is ah! unplayable. By <laughs> Outside of budget and just like what you have available to you, this is unplayable. Like if I had all the options in the world, I'm not picking this. I, I, I'd rather just not play it. And I this is my opposition agent slot. It's three mana. It does something. <laughs> it's it's a removal spell. It could be a draw. I would think I would just play think twice over this. Oh this is God. why Krim is stuck on three mana. Yeah. I'm stuck on three <laughs> mana for multiple reasons, and that is not why. I think this is the you, literal definition of what a three drop should be for, for a mana rock. <laughs> Two mana? For for two drop mana rock, you want it to tap for one mana, and it comes into play untapped. For three, if you add an extra mana for three, I want it to tap for two mana. That's insane. That's an insane. That, that, that is was the rate that, insane. But um, I I think this is this is like this is legit. Like if I look at a three mana rock and I say what is the best one, I'm going to say Worn Power Stone. Like. It is it's a hundred percent S for me because if you look at all the other mana and rocks we talked about, they all tap for one. They all of them tap for one. The but only one that's an exception, and they stick around. They have a utility to make up for the fact that they don't tap for two mana. They tap as much as a two drop mana rock would, but they make up for it by adding utility. This one straight up just taps for two instead of one. Like that is. Absolute bananas. Like, that's absolute bananas. The only downside I do agree with is it comes into play tapped, but, like, I almost never have that as an issue for me. Like, 
I'm going to play this turn three. I'm not going to have the... I wouldn't use the mana for anything anyway. Like, if it came out, if it came to play untapped and tap for one, like, what am I going to cast? Do I have another one drop in my hand? No. Um, this is fine. And then the, oh, for the rest of the game, it's tapping for two? For two mana? That's absolutely insane. I mean, I... I like Horn Power Stone. The problem I have with it is it's basically just a bad Hedron Archive. It's like a Hedron Archive that comes into play tapped and doesn't draw cards. I would so play Hedron Archive it's over it's this. pretty it, it's okay, but what? Not, not even the troll you, Tomer. Like I I would legitimately play Hedron Archive over this. I'm actually confused how that one mana, like it's one more mana for Hedron Archive, and you get so many upsides. I'm very confused how you can specifically S tier worn power stone and hate Hedron Archive. Like that one, that one man is not that enough. Is to... What if I took Lightning I Bolt even, and changed it to Incinerate? Is, is there what a is difference? That's like that one man is huge, right? No, but this is card draw. This but is it also not drew like cards. A... Yeah. You don't get both though. It's not like it has like some ETB utility or something that you have on the battle. You have to spend an additional two mana and crack it to get your your two man, and then it's gone. I and mean, he just okay. archives God. I, you spent six mana for your I, two cards I, in 2021. I, I, I think, this is the value you want. <laughs> I think I sidetracked us a little bit because we're only talking about three mana rocks and Hedron Archive. As good as it is, Hedron it's Archive, four mana. For those who don't know, I'm going to post the, the, the cursed video. <laughs> it was it's, as it was like 2019. I think I posted it, and it's more valid now than ever before. <laughs> Look, I, have more I, I finally agree with Tomer here. here, okay? I haven't agreed with Tomer on many of these, but <laughs> I think this is S. I think this challenges Skyclave Relic and probably is better than Skyclave Relic, <laughs> right? Like, it is. you don't need utility. Like, you have a deck with a game plan. All the actual cards do something, and they probably do it really well, hence it's a deck, right? All you're trying to do is just brute force out mana, and this gives you two mana, at three, right? There's some downsides. You have like a five CMC deck, or sorry, five color deck. This might be a little awkward. But in general, just like two raw mana, like I don't care that Heraldic Banner adds one. This two mana gets me to Coat of Arms. That adds like plus 20 power to the battlefield, right? It does whatever my deck is supposed to do, which is way better than any incremental advantage you get on these other mana rocks. So, but, or your bad but Nicol Bolas on, on that you own. usually don't have the mana to pass. <laughs> Right? On its own, <laughs> this can't cast Nico Bolas. By the way, the, the god <laughs> what <laughs> Planeswalker? Yeah, it doesn't no, he have Planeswalker? Yeah, yeah, but Dragon God, this does nothing. Right? Like, yeah, I, I can't. Why I can't would you even play Dragon God? It, it, it doesn't uh, synergize uh, with Chromantic Lantern. <laughs> like this, <laughs> Chromantic Lantern does more. And um, I, I, I'm sorry. Like all, all these other cards are good on their own. Um, and and I think Chromatic Lantern is good on its own because the color fixing is worth it. Right, like, so. like you can construct a mana base such that Chromatic Lantern is not needed. Like you can get that resource from other means. Whereas with Worn Power Stone, like you got Ancient Tomb and that's it. Like you can't really eke out the extra mana any other way. Whereas like theoretically, if we had like the same deck, I could have played a mana base such that I got the equivalent power of Chromatic Lantern. Whereas like Worn Power Stone, there's like three cards: Soul Ring, Ancient Tomb this right like you, you, there's very few ways to get repeatable extra mana this early also isn't the whole point with these mana rocks is we already like we already came to a consensus before we even started that like a two drop like a signet is better than like basically than this entire list right like barring like some of our s's so and those don't have any added, added utility they're just pay two mana have a mana rock that taps for one this is pay three mana have a mana rock that taps for three i feel like like if we're following the same logic, this is this is an S. Like it's it's one of the best ones because there's no other mana rock on this list that is pay three, uh, tap for two. Well, the reason for that one. is because the yeah. low investment of two mana, right? Like that that's why I don't expect them to do anything more than just add mana, right? Like for those two like signets and things like that. At three I mean, mana, uh, I have a I have a higher bar and I expect it to do a lot more. Is this because you play draw growth control? Yes. And you can and, well even <laughs> even in my humans deck too, right? Like my humans deck, my aggro decks. If I play, a th if I if I'm in an aggro deck, I, I really out. need I... a reason to play a three mana mana rock. I okay. mean, Krim has been pretty upfront about his uh, crazy mana cost all game, and if if you're trying to cast quad blue spells and uh, you know triple black spells, 
Worn Power Stone does go down in value a lot. It's like never going to cast a Frexine Obliterator or not most of a Cryptic Command or something. So maybe it's just a deck that Grim plays. Like can't take well, advantage of it. never wants to tap out, right? Like he always wants to have something ready no matter what. I mean, and even, I think that even makes aggro sense. decks don't tap out, right? Because I, I, I have like eerie interlude and stuff like that. So like, I don't know. I mean, I, I just feel like oftentimes the two colorless just never comes into play except for casting my commander. Like this pays for one death on my commander. But why do you play Soul Ring? That's two colorless. <laughs> well, but Soul Ring is only one. That mana. can't cast Low. counterspell. <laughs> no, but it's <laughs> low investment. That's the thing. It's only one mana. This is and also, it comes to play untapped, no, so you can three, immediately use that mana. Three mana, this is coming in pretty hot here. Like, it's, <laughs> it's consistent with Krim. Like, like uh, the well, Sol Ring not only is a one mana, but like also the the Sol Ring doesn't into the battlefield tap. So like Krim could like pay one mana, put the Sol Ring up, and then still have like a colorless source or something ready, and he can cast like a three mana spell at instant speed. Like it makes sense. Yeah, I get that from. From the, I like think Krim is trolled. There's no way it's a D. I could see like Seth I don't, like, yeah, being no an A. I'm not playing. Look, that, look at all my. You know, I, I never can see play that, this. right? But D seems. I incorrect. never play this. You, and you must keep adding it to your deck and realize the power of having like five available mana <laughs> instead of like sitting there I, mana screwed. If it if it added two colored mana, I'd probably play it. But like begrudgingly, well, actually, no, or it's the no, best no, card ever. No, I wouldn't. It, it would it would have to do more because it had to stick around. Skyclave can kind of do that if you pay six it duplicates itself but then it sticks around um you know what I, like like strixhaven stadium can kill somebody yeah the, you know actually even if this added color it would go from d to about probably a c or b to be Krim honest with you i think this is Krim this is almost mana. an f <laughs> Krim, this is Krim Krim about mana. I've, I've heard this entire thing <laughs> wow it makes sense though. I think for this Krim is the decks. biggest spread, right? I don't think we yeah. ever had an yeah. S and a D on any S of our tier lists, thinking. right? No. Wow. I thought inspiring saturary would be the biggest gulf between hype and not hype, but <laughs> here we are. Also, so, this also is so Chris dated. Mirror. <laughs> this is so dated. It's, so, it's still so good. I, it's still so good. I, at least it didn't it's say like Soul Ring is say, dated. It is not. It is super Soul good. Soul Ring is forever until it gets banned. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, like th this card is so dated. This I like. I see this in my pre cons. I hate it. I, I see this whenever. Like I I played this and I hated it every time I've had it. Like I'll tell you why it's not overrated because Wizards hasn't made another one. Like this is their benchmark card, right? Like they they've never made another three mana, Thankfully. two mana. Yet. you know they they never decide like oh we need to add Scry one onto it or we need to add day night mechanic to it, right? It They're will like, it will enter the battlefield let's do OP. untapped. The next one <laughs> we'll is just leave be it like, as this. If you have two or more opponents, this enters the battlefield untapped. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. I still wouldn't play that. <laughs> oh my goodness. What? <laughs> if it added two colors, it, it enters tapped is obviously big sad, but the fact that it just adds two colors and doesn't do anything else is why. So it as I, everything I play in all my decks has to have utility or else I'm just not playing it. Or if it's a troll huh. card, then, then I'll play it. <laughs> <laughs> but this isn't even troll people so like it's not even that good <laughs> it is a troll people he has to use the podcast to troll people instead <laughs> how can it be a D I don't understand I don't know. This, is, this, is, this is a wild one alright so we went over 12 mana rocks or sorry 11 mana rocks we went over 11 mana rocks in the span of an hour and 30 minutes and uh, there were some hot takes. There were some spicy takes. There was a lot of disagreements. And we want to hear from you now. Uh, if you're listening, uh, let us know in the comments section or send us an email or on Twitter. If you do hashtag Clash Mail, that's probably the easiest way to reach out to us. What's your opinion on these mana rocks? Uh, do you side with Krim that pa Warden Power Stone is... Stone Cold Unplayable. Uh, do you agree it with is. me that Inspiring Saturary is one of the best underrated mana rocks of all time? Um, let us know in the comments section or reaching out to us uh, what you feel about these cards. And that's it for the podcast, everybody. Um, if you want to support the show, as I keep forgetting to say in the beginning, but if you're here, thank you for, for reaching the end. But also, you can support us by heading over to the MTG Goldfish merch store um and buying stuff like uh richard's wall it's green right now well it's not green it's gonna be whatever we chroma key it in surprise uh, uh the illusion <laughs> my <laughs> illusion no, no. <laughs> um yeah everything is a lie 
Um, and and but the thing that isn't a lie is our merchandise, which is very good quality and not at all green screen. Um, so you can go over there, buy stuff, and and that would be great. And you support the show, and we could do more of it and 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 whatnot. Um, and that's it, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. And until next time, friends. See ya.